60 Minutes Overtime. This week on 60 Minutes, we reported on ransomware attacks. Hackers from across the world have teamed up to attack tech companies, casinos, and hospitals in the United States, taking their data hostage by encrypting it and demanding ransom for the keys to unlock it. It's a cancer on the internet, and we're just getting destroyed. The amount of money that's going out of our economy going into the hands of criminals is astronomical. John DiMaggio, a former analyst for the National Security Agency, now investigates ransomware as chief security strategist for the cybersecurity company Analyst One. You can see up He told us that, that ransomware gangs based so in Russia offer their services, like the malware so used in attacks, experience negotiating ransoms and laundering money to affiliates who conduct the hacks. So there's a term, it's called ransomware as a service that's been given to uh, the structure and the format of these gangs. So in return, when a victim pays an extortion, the profit that comes from it is now shared amongst those criminals. DiMaggio said he has successfully infiltrated some Russian ransomware gangs in criminal forums on the dark web to find out who's behind them and how they work. He publishes his findings online in reports that he calls the ransomware diaries. I realized these guys are touchable. I can pretend to be someone else and go out and actually talk to them and extract information. I create accounts and I make them believable. So social media accounts, email accounts, spend a month or two at least uh, creating posts, talking to people, doing things that will leave a, a wide footprint that only a real person would have. And I work from person to person until I get as close as I can anyway to the end target. And, and sometimes it can take months. I've got a relationship with a threat actor that's you know going on over a year and a half. There's usually a backstory. That backstory helps you understand that criminal and understand what drives them and why they are who they are. One of the world's most prolific ransomware gangs is Lockbit. They've targeted more than 2,000 victims and extorted more than $120 million in ransom payments since they started. Well, now to the major takedown of one of the most notorious cyber crime gangs on the dark web. It's in February, the Department of Justice, in partnership the with the United Kingdom and other law enforcement agencies, seized control of Lockbit's servers. The Department of Justice also unsealed an indictment charging two Russian nationals with deploying Lockbit ransomware against numerous victims throughout the U.S. and the world. DiMaggio told us he got close with one of them and learned his backstory. He uses the moniker Bastard Lord. Grew up in an area of the Ukraine that was taken over in 2014 when Russia invaded their country. Uh, his mother had a, an illness at the time. He needed to pay bills. The country was in chaos, so he used what was available to him, and that is what led to him being a cyber criminal. It sounds like you developed almost a friendship with this guy. I did develop a friendship with him. I do like him personally as, as a human being for who he is. I don't like the things that he's decided to do. Lockbit has attacked companies, banks, hospitals, schools, and even law enforcement in the United States. Last fall, they were responsible for a ransomware attack on the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. They also went after aerospace giant Boeing. DiMaggio told us he was able to make contact with the person he believes is the leader of Lockbit. You made contact with the leader of Lockbit? I did. It wasn't an easy uh, task. What does he go by? Uh, he goes by the name Lockbit Sup, which is short for Lockbit Support. It's a persona that, that he accesses. In January, Lockbit claimed responsibility for an attack on St. Anthony Hospital in Chicago, copying patient and administrative data, threatening to publish it if they were not paid a ransom. The real tragedy was they encrypted all of the systems that the hospital uses to treat people. And one of the things this hospital specializes in is catering to poor, low-income families, uh, homeless people, uh, and children who have cancer, amongst other things. So I understand you had some words with Lockbit Sup. I believed that I could get him to do the right thing and give a decryption key back. And I said, hey, you know, you're not a monster. You might be greedy, but do the right thing here. These people need treatment. And he listened to that? He did not listen to that. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Anyone that would do something that hurts children, I have no empathy for. DiMaggio says the Russian government and former Soviet countries 
provide a safe haven for hackers. As long as they don't target, uh, you know, an organization that falls within Russia or the former Soviet uh, state, they, they don't get prosecuted. It's not considered a crime. So what can the U.S. government do when the criminal organization is seemingly under the protection of the Russian government? It's really tough. All that we can really do is try to disrupt and deter them. We can spy on them. We can collect intelligence. We can uh, try and hurt their reputations. We can try and make it more expensive and time-consuming to do these crimes. What about the National Security Agency or Cyber Command? Is there anything they can do to disrupt these gangs? Yes, there's a lot that they can do, uh, and that's something where I feel like we need to do better. Most of this falls under a law enforcement's realm where a judge has to sign off on you know a warrant for these actions if we were to use the authorities that like the NSA for example has where you don't need a judge to sign off on it and you can do things that law enforcement can't do in some of these operations we'd be much more effective but we are doing better we've got to continue to get better and we're underpowered we're under resourced compared to what uh, we're up against